what's going on guys welcome back welcome back to another video hope all is well make sure you give me a like uh for those watching the rebroadcast that'll be helpful to me and i appreciate it also subscribe and also hit the bell notification so you can get updated on my latest content as it drops also for those that have subscribed i appreciate it i appreciate every last one of you and also we have a membership and in the membership, I'm going to be dropping the footage that I have from the trial. That'll be for the members so that you can go back and look at it anytime that you want. So I want to talk about um, what's the plan? What's in store for the remaining members of Allegio Nature Boy Bishop now that he's behind bars? What is the plan? Um, I watched the ladies give an interview on Fox um, and they told their side of the story. It's always important to hear their side of the story because I like to hear multiple sides of the story because everybody is talking about their life, but them. And I feel like they're the best to talk about what's going on. They're actually living it. They're actually still a part of this situation and everybody has an opinion on it. But I want to hear from Aya, Afaru, Malia, Zoka. That's who I really want to hear from. I mean, I hear everybody else's opinion, but they're actually going through it. And we have to keep that in mind. Um, that they're going through it. They didn't, um, it, they're not the reason why he's behind bars. Okay. And I know people say, oh, they should leave and they should go on with their lives. But I'm hearing a lot of bad things saying that's being said about them. And if you really care about their well-being and their mental well-being, you guys wouldn't shouldn't be so harsh on them. You know, um, you should direct your attention at Nature Boy and not them. You know, if you think that they're victims, if you think that, if you think that they're victims, then I would just kind of dial back on the criticism and things like that. I heard what um, Aaron had to say. He said that he would be a better cult leader than them. And I think that's wrong because, you know, there's, you know, give them a chance. You know, you got to give them a chance. Time will tell, you know, five years from now, what's going to happen five years from now? We don't know. We don't know what their life is going to be like two months from now. We don't know what their life is going to be like six months from now. So I would say give them a chance instead of instead of attacking them. You know, um, that's just my opinion. And um, everybody has an opinion on it. So I'm just giving my opinion on it. That's all. So don't, you know, uh, don't mind what I'm saying. But I want to, okay, if they, what's next? What's the plan? So we have Aya, we have um, Eferu, we have Malia, we have Juju, and we have Jax. As far as I'm concerned, those are the five remaining members that we know of. There could be other supporters out there that we don't know about. There could be other um, affiliates that we don't know about. But those are the people that we see that are that we say are currently the members. Now, where they go from that from here is up to them. If they really want to help him, if they really want to help him. They can't, they can't lose hope. And I know some of you don't want to hear that, but I'm just talking to them for a second. Um, they can't lose hope. Let me tell you why. Nothing is concrete in the legal system. You always have action in the appeals. Okay, let me just give you a perfect example. See this guy here? That's Scott Peterson. Now, some people may not know who Scott Peterson is. He was convicted of deleting his then wife, Lacey Peterson and her unborn child. But if I do a quick search on Scott Peterson, right, go to the news tab. It says here, let me just say this, Scott Peterson, Scott Peterson asked for a new DNA test and pushed for overturn Lacey Peterson murder conviction. Okay. And it says Scott Peterson appeared virtually in court on Tuesday nearly 20 years after he was convicted of killing his wife, Lacey Peterson, and their unborn child, several outlets reported. Peterson 
zoomed into a San Mateo County courtroom for uh, from Mule Creek State Prison as part of an effort to overturn his n November 2004 conviction. In January, his case was picked up by the Los Angeles Innocence Project. I'm going to talk about them in a second, the Innocence Project. Um, it's a nonprofit organization whose attorneys work to exonerate wrongfully convicted individuals. The Associated Press reported that the Innocent Project lawyers representing Peterson asked the judge to order a new DNA test and allow them to access that uh, access to evidence tied to a burglary that occurred across the street from the Peterson's home. CBS News reported that Peterson did not speak much during the hearing except for formalities such as yes and your honor. Now, what happened to Lacey Peterson? Lacey Peterson, she was 27 years old at the time, was eight months pregnant when she disappeared on Christmas Eve 2002. Scott Peterson at the time told officials that he last saw her that morning before he went fishing at Berkeley Marina, about 90 miles from the couple's home. Now, I'm going to tell you why I'm bringing this up in a second. I'm going to tell you why I'm talking about these cases in a second. I have another case to talk about, and then I'm going to bring it home on why people always have action in the appeals in the higher courts. When he came back home, he found their dog in the backyard, the house empty, and Lacey's car in the driveway. Scott then took a shower before going to ask neighbors if they had seen Lacey. And when they said they hadn't, he then called Lacey's mom, who had not seen her. Lacey was then reported missing to the police. On April 2003, the body of a full-term fetus and um was found on shoreline um of san francisco bay by kept a couple walking a dog um badly decomposed body of a woman was also found a few miles north of berkeley marina the bodies were later identified as lacy and her baby the body was found near where scott said he was fishing on the day she disappeared now let me go back the bodies were later identified as Lacey and her baby. The body was found near where Scott said he went fishing on the day she disappeared. On the day she disappeared, he said where, where he said he went fishing, that's where they found her. He was arrested on April 18, 2003, and charged with first-degree murder of his wife and second-degree second degree murder of their child. As investigators searched for Lacey, they soon learned that Scott had extramarital affair with his massage ther therapist, Amber Frey. Frey worked with investigators and testified at Scott's trial. Scott was convicted of murder in November of 2004. A month later, sentenced to um, deletion. Over the next two decades, his attorney would launch two appeals. Now get this, on over the next two decades, his attorneys would launch two appeals. In 2020, a California Supreme Court overturned Peterson's um, deletion sentence, um, but upheld his conviction. He was um, resentenced in December of 2021 to life in prison without the possibility of parole and in 2022 was denied another trial. Earlier this year, the Innocence Project announced that they would take on Scott's case, arguing that he didn't get a fair trial. Representatives from the Los Angeles branch told ABC News that new evidence had surfaced providing Scott's innocence and argued his constitutional rights were violated during the original proceedings. 
New evidence now supports Mr. Peterson's longstanding claim of innocence and raises many questions into who abducted and deleted Lacey and Connor Peterson. Filings obtained by ABC News state. The AP reported that the judge in Tuesday's hearing was set the next two hearings for April 16th and May 29th. And Peterson will also virtually attend those hearings. The Los Angeles Innocent Project did not immediately respond to USA Today's request for comment. Okay, so that is uh, Scott Peterson. Okay, now we're going to go to Max B. Okay, Max B. We're going to go to Max B. Um, we're going to go to Max B for a second. Now, it says here, Max B is in good spirits as he looks ahead to his long-awaited release from prison, which could be in the next few months. The Wave God posted a video on social media earlier this week. Well, this was back last year, where he has been flashing a huge smile as he gave fans an update on his imminent freedom in a phone call from behind bars. Y'all know uh, what it is. Shout out to my boy. The birthday boy just checking in. You already know, man, I'm feeling good. He said while rocking an icy Jesus piece chain over his prison clothes. It's almost over. Two more joints. My, um, He said the N-word. I'm sliding out. Max Bigavelli. He's 45 years old. I feel good, looking good. I taste good. I smell good. N-word. All right. So let me just go to uh, New Jersey Department of Corrections. New Jersey. I want to show you something. Department of Corrections. Because this was back in uh, 2023. Um, okay, let me go back. This was 2023. And let's see. We need to find... We need to do an inmate search and I'm going to show you something and then I'm going to tell you why I'm showing you all of this. Okay, let's go to inmate search. Uh, let's see. And let me see, Max B, What his name is Charlie Wingate. Charlie Wingate. Oh, let me go back. Charlie Wingate. Mail. Okay, let's see. Well, I'm just trying to find Max B now in uh, the Department of Corrections. Hold on one second. Max B. Because I want to show you something, the reason why I'm talking about these cases. Uh, first of all, if you're um, listening, I appreciate you guys. Make sure you give me a... Um, oh, I had this name spell wrong. Okay, that's why. All right, let me go back. Um, let me see, Charlie. Oh, I still can't find it. Let me see something here. I can't find him in the Department of Corrections. What's going on here? Did he get out? <laughs> All right. Because I want to show you his um his max release date. It says we apologize. Okay, let's see. Full name. Let's see, black. Okay, nine. All right, well, 
for some reason, I can't find him in the New, Jer- New Jersey Department of Corrections. But his um, when I read it, his um, release date was next year. And he was originally sentenced to like 70 years um, in the New Jersey Department of Corrections. And let me just go to his Wikipedia for a second. And let me go to his uh, why he got incarcerated. Okay, it says on September 22nd, 2006, Gina Conway, Max B's ex-girlfriend, met up with Max B and told him about Alan J. um, Plowden, whom she had recently met and Plowden's money. Hold on, who she recently met and she talked about Plowden's money. Max B uh, formed a plan to rob Plowden. So he sent Kevin Learden his uh, stepbrother to rob Plowden, and he told Conway to go with uh, Leardham to the Holiday Inn in Fort Lee, New Jersey, where Plowden was staying and helped Leardham uh, with the robbery. Conway and Leardham headed to the Fort Lee Holiday Inn. When Conway and Leardham got into Plowden's hotel room, Conway knocked on the door, and Giselle Nieves answered, saying that Plowden was sleeping. Conway and Leardon came into the room where um, Leardon and ne- ne- uh, excuse me, Leardon held Nevis at gunpoint. Conway duct taped her and searched the room for money, but didn't find it. And Conway woke Plowden up and duct taped, duct tape, excuse me, duct taped him. Um, Plowden was asked about the money, and he said it wasn't there. Then Leardon forced Plowden to call his partner, David Taylor who was staying at the hotel with another woman to come to the room to bring him the money. When Taylor arrived, uh, Leardham immediately shot Taylor point blank execution style um, in the dome. Conway took um, $800. They took $800, folks, from Taylor's pockets, and Leardham took a watch off his wrist. Uh, Conway um, took me of his purse. The crew fled the scene and Plowden alerted the hotel front desk of the murder. As police entered the room, Plowden was caught moving 30,000 out of the room. Plowden was later charged with money laundering and identified in um, identity theft. On September 28, 2006, Conway was arrested in connection with the murder and gave a statement to the police implicating Max and Leardham. Um, whom were arrested and charged. On January 9, 2007, Max B. was remanded to Bergen County Jail in New Jersey on a $2 million bail. On January, in January 2009, Conway pleaded guilty to manslaughter and armed robbery and agreed to testify against Max B. and Leardham, facing a maximum sentence of 18 years. Now, conviction and appeal. On May 23rd, 2009, Max B. and Kevin Leardham, the trial began. On June 9th, 2009, Max B. and Leardham was found guilty of nine of 11 counts, including felony murder. On September 3rd, 2009, Max B. was sentenced to 75 years in prison and Leardham was sentenced to life in prison plus 35 years. The following day, Conway was sentenced to 15 years. All right. Uh, Max B. mother, Sharon Wingate, and fellow rap artist French Montana said he planned to appeal the conviction. On March 19, 2010, Max B. was granted an appeal with a new trial and lawyer. On February 2012, uh, rumors... um, spread that Max B request for an appeal had been denied, but it was cleared up as a internet blog Twitter rumor. On August 30th, 2012, Max B appeal was denied and he was set to remain in prison and finish his 75 year sentence. In mid 2016, Max B's conviction were vacated. In September 16, 2016, he pled, he pled guilty to aggravated manslaughter and was sentenced to 20 years, um, putting his release date as 2025. Okay, so 
his release date is actually 2025. Now, why did I talk about um, Scott Peterson and Max B? Because these guys um, were convicted. Okay, they were convicted. And they both had action in the appeals. Now, Scott case is pending with the Innocence Project. And I think he's going to have some action there to get a new trial. Now, if he gets a new trial, he could negotiate for less time and possibly see the light of day again. Now, Max B, he was originally sentenced to um, he was originally sentenced to 75 years, folks. OK, he was originally sentenced to 75 years and he got a new lawyer. OK, he got a new lawyer and the rest was history. He got a new lawyer and the rest was history and his sentence were vacated. Now, he could have went back to trial, but he pled he pled guilty and he's going to get out in 2025. Now, you would have thought that they caught him dead to rights because um, he had um, someone testify against him in this botched robbery um, that uh, resulted in someone getting deleted in New Jersey. OK, so he had somebody testify against him. Um, he had somebody testify against him and you would have thought that was it. He's done. His life is over, but he actually got a new lawyer, a better lawyer than the one he had previously. And now he's getting out in 2025. The reason why I say that is because his current members, if they feel like their back is against the wall and he's never going to get out, um, at this point, you need to be thinking about how can I raise enough money to get a lawyer like Max B or a lawyer like um, Scott Peterson to get Nature Boy back in court and possibly get this vacated or negotiate less time so he can see the light of day again. That's what they need to be thinking. And I'm not saying this to help anybody out, but I'm just saying you always have action in the appeals. And that was my whole point um previously when i was saying you always have action in the appeals which he is going to appeal but it's one thing to appeal i, I think they said they was going to get someone a court appointed attorney it's one thing to have that and it's one thing to have some money and get adequate representation then anything is possible i'm not saying that it's going to be um overturned or anything like that like max b but it's possible but they have to, um, at this point, they will have to strategize and figure out how they can come up with some money. And, um, or they might be thinking about, you know what, I'm going to go on with my life. I have to, I have to, I have a life to live. It's, it's, it's up to them. Everything is up to them right now. Um, like right now, the jury said guilty and it's final, right? Life without the possibility of parole. But I just explained the Max B's case. Max B um, allegedly put um, a lick together and it was a botched situation and somebody got deleted and then somebody testified against him. Right. And you would think it's over. Right. A lot of people thought it was over. And a lot of people said his lawyer previously um, didn't do really a good job. And what he did was he went back pay some money and got um, adequate representation. Now he's getting out in 2025. Um, originally, they sentenced him to 75 years. That's essentially life because he's in his 40s. Um, that's essentially life. That's a life sentence. OK, 75 years, is a lot of time, seven decades plus five. OK, but he's getting out in 2025. Now, he did spend a considerable amount of time incarcerated. He did. Um, so he can't get that time back. But my point is nothing is final in the legal system. You people, I'm just talking legal right now. I'm not trying to take up for anybody. Okay. I'm just talking legal right now. Um, if any one of you listen, if you have a loved one that's incarcerated and you feel like you can get a better lawyer to look at his case, you might want to do so. You might want to, but it's going to take some money. It's going to take some money to do that. And that's that's my only point. If they're feeling, of course, they're going to feel frustrated right now because he's behind bars. And. I mean, 80, a lifetime is a lifetime, you know, they sentence him to life without the possibility of parole. That's a hard pill to swallow. 
but they have to think this in their mind. Okay, if they want to help him, they can help him from any state. They don't have to remain in Georgia. They can help him from anywhere, right? And they have to think, how can we all collectively come together and raise some money to get him adequate representations, a lawyer that's respected in that state? That's what they need to be thinking. Um, but they, they can't let their life fall to shambles because that's not going to help him at all if they want to help him. Now, like I said, things could be different five years from now. We don't know where their mental state is going to be at. They might be like, I want to move on, right? They might be like, I want to move on, so we don't know. But um, if you guys honestly think that they're victims, I wouldn't attack them. You know, I wouldn't be frustrated with them. That's their life to live. And everybody has their own life to live. Everybody has their own decisions to make. And uh, so I just wanted to say that. Um, now this is for anybody that's listening. If you have a loved one, okay, that's incarcerated and you feel like that person is innocent, there's action in the appeals, but it's going to take money to get an adequate, respectable lawyer in your particular state or, or your loved one while he's doing time anyway, he or she need to be in the law library because there's laws getting changed each year that might be applicable to your case. You understand what I'm saying? There's laws each year that's getting changed that might be applicable to your case. I'm not just talking about Nature Boy right now. I'm talking about anybody that's listening. You might have a loved one that needs some um, relief. Tell he or she to get in the law library, right? Research their case. Look at their case up and down. And you got to help your lawyer out sometime. Um, and I also want to say, if you get arrested, if you don't know anything about the law, because everybody, we all don't know everything. We're not lawyers, right? But at least know you have a right to remain silent. Anything you can say can and will be held against you in a court of law, whether you're on the phone or whatever you're doing. So keep that in mind. It's interesting that they didn't um, play his jailhouse phone calls. You notice that in the trial, they didn't play it. But um, you got to be careful what you say and hang in the law library. I'm not just talking about nature, boy. I'm talking in general for a minute. If you have a loved one that's incarcerated, that's what you want to do. Because um, there's some people, I'm not just speaking about this case. I'm not speaking about this case. I'm speaking in general. There's a lot of people, unfortunately, that's incarcerated right now that's innocent. There's a lot of them. And the Innocence Project, just getting to the Innocence Project for a minute, was started by a few members of the OJ um, Dream Team. They are instrumental in getting a lot of cases reversed. Okay, now they're working on Scott Peterson. Um, they, they, they were responsible for getting a lot of people sent home. Some of it way, is, is by way of DNA evidence. Um, there was some evidence that was held out of the case that it could have proved their innocence, things like that. Now, the Innocence Project, from my understanding, it takes a couple years before they even look at your case after conviction because they only handle cases post-conviction. So that's an avenue that these um, ladies could go into, the Innocence Project. Um, or if you have a family member, you might want to send their case to the Innocence Project. That might be, um, and they do it uh, free of charge. It's a nonprofit. Uh, organization. So that's what you, you might want to think about if you have a loved one. Somebody might be listening right now, might have a loved one behind bars and don't know what to do. Um, so that's what I wanted to say there. And I just want to say this, um, just, you know, looking back at carbonation when um, Nature Boy first started um, this camp, what could he have done differently? What could he have done differently? Well, if he wanted to start a camp as big as he wanted to start it, he might want to incorporate it, uh, make it an LLC. Now, I heard that a former member has done that already. I don't know. For me, that's hearsay. I don't know if he did. I think he mentioned it, but I don't know until I see paperwork. But I'm just talking about from the beginning, he may have wanted to make this legit. You know, um, and some of the money that was donated 
for the cause, you know, living expenses, some of that money should have been put aside in an investment account so that money can grow just in case if you might need adequate representation, you know, God forbid, um, you know, and treat it like a business, you know, like that. And um, always have representation um, on standby if you need it, you know. Um, but, you know, hindsight is twenty twenty. Um, he just sought out to go out there in the tropics and people followed him and things went left, you know. Um, but that's what I wanted to say about that. You have to treat your life like a business, like your life. You are the CEO of your life. And I learned this back in um, school. You are the CEO of your life. You are the commander of your life. You make business decisions every day that will affect your life in the future. Everybody does. You make business decisions every day that, it could, that can affect your present and your future. And um, whether it's putting money away to make sure you have money for a rainy day, um, you know, if you work for yourself, whatever you do, you're made, you're constantly making decisions um, in your life and, and constant, just like a business problems arise and you're constantly solving problems. You know, you got to treat your life like a business. Marriage is a business. If you get married, that's two, com two companies merging together. That's how you got to see it. And um, he should have treated this more like a business, but hindsight is 2020. Um, but now the ladies can treat their life like a business what can I do to help myself? Because they can't, they got to help themselves before they help him. And um, I recommend not saying too much in public. You know, I understand that they make money online, their supporters and stuff like that. But if they got supporters helping them out, they don't need to say much. They don't need to say much. Um, and also, I want to say if they're open, if they want to come on and talk, about the case of, in their perspective, they can. I'll just sit and listen, you know, if they want to use my platform or if anybody wants to talk to me, um, shoot me a quick note and then we'll talk about um, a plan to, um, you know, have a live chat. If you don't want to do it live, we can do a pre record, you know, so just uh, let me know. You can follow me, find me on Instagram. My contact information is in the description. So I just wanted to say that, man, every day you make decisions. You are the CEO. You are the owner and CEO of your life. Because once you get out of school, you're responsible for your life. And the decisions you make um, could affect your immediate future. I mean, your immediate present and your future. So you got to make decisions. You got to be wise about it. Now, we're going to make mistakes along the way. But you got to learn from your mistakes and move on. Um, so that's just what I wanted to say about this right here. What's next for the camp? Um, I see they making videos. I see Jax made a video. He said a few things and everything that they're doing is being recorded. You know, that's being played back. I noticed that everything. So they got to be mindful of what they say. And um, remember what they do as a business. They got to treat it that way now. But anyway, that's what I wanted to say. Um, that's just my two cents. And um, everybody has an opinion on it. And I'm just giving you mine. That's all. No harm, no foul. But um, like I said, if anybody affiliated with this case, if you want to come on and talk to me and have a conversation, I'm open. You can find me on Instagram. My contact is in the description. So you definitely can find me. But guys, I thank you for watching. And I definitely... We'll see you next video. Make sure you give, give me a like on the way out if you haven't done so already. Um, also, subscribe and also hit the bell notification so you can get updated on my latest content as it drops. I appreciate you guys for um, subscribing. For those that did, I appreciate my moderators for always moderating. I appreciate you and I appreciate you guys for listening. Guys, I will see you on the next one. Peace.